And the presenter uh, is Keishi Kojima, Executive Vice President and Executive Officer, General Manager of Smart Life Business Management Division. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance. Starting from April, I've been responsible for the smart life uh, sector. My name is uh, Kojima. I appreciate your attention and attendance today. Today, I will discuss the smart life uh, sector. As uh, our CEO Higashara said, we're still amidst uh, structural reform. So centering around that topic, I would like to uh, present the 2021 midterm management uh, plan uh, for our sector. Once again, uh, the areas I'm responsible for, automotive, systems, uh, smart uh, life and eco-friendly, uh, including home appliances, air conditioners, and healthcare BU. These are the three areas I'm responsible for. And the key words uh, here are health, uh, safety, uh, comfort. Uh, uh, by leveraging these uh, keywords, we will uh, aim at solving social issues. By using IoT, we will like to improve the QOL of consumers and save energy for everyone. And through such activities, uh, we would uh, like to contribute uh, to achieving SDGs and Society 5.0. That's how we will proceed. Now, the overall size is such that in fiscal year 2018, our revenue was 1.8 trillion yen. Uh, in terms of the breakdown, automotive uh, system accounted for 53%, just over 50%. Uh, smart life eco-friendly systems, including home appliances, uh, air conditioners, account for 27%, healthcare 20%. Healthcare uh, business numbers uh, include healthcare business unit, including uh, diagnostics uh, and uh, therapy systems, as well as uh, the business of Hitachi uh, high tech uh, uh, business. Uh, now, the vision that we would uh, like to strive uh, to achieve uh, is to create livable cities uh, where people's QOL can be enhanced. Now, under this concept, for us, what becomes most important as the basis, of course, is uh, the competitive uh, technology and the products. Uh, that should be the starting point. Uh, from there on, we will be making contributions. But on the other hand, data economy is rapidly expanding. Amidst that, uh, these uh, products uh, are increasingly connected uh, uh, to the networks uh, generating data. So by leveraging such big data, more specifically, uh, we will uh, use uh, uh, Lumada's AI and analytics uh, so that uh, the operation of uh, devices and products uh, can be automated from that uh, new uh, social and environmental values can be created. In the case of a car, a uh, connected uh, a car is emerging, uh, being connected to networks. Uh, uh, the operation, uh, the driving is automated, uh, generating new values uh, for the consumers. So that is what we would like to realize uh, and achieve uh, health, uh, safety, and comfort. Uh, through our products, uh, technology, and Lumada, uh, we would like to support uh, these ideas. And that is our aspiration. At the outset, as Mr. Higashara said, uh, in the new uh, midterm management plan, uh, fiscal year 2021, on top of the economic value, uh, we would like to generate and deliver social and environmental values as well. In the case of uh, smart life sector, for example, uh, we are offering new particle therapy treatment uh, so that the patient can maintain uh, their QOL. They can lead normal lives uh, as they undergo cancer therapies. Uh, or with uh, autonomous uh, driving technology, traffic accidents uh, can be reduced and uh, eliminated. That's a wish. And uh, with electrification and uh, application of IoT technology, we would like to contribute to preventing global warming. Uh, so through continuous technological innovations, uh, uh, we will uh, make uh, efforts to generate a social and environmental values. That's what our sector is about. Once again, what is uh, the aim of the 2021 midterm management plan for our sector? Allow me to explain that. In the last few years, air conditioners uh, business is uh, deconsolidated, a uh, clarion, and automotive battery business 
have been sold uh, through such activities. Uh, we have uh, conducted business structural reform in the last few years. Uh, for the 2021 midterm management plan, uh, we would uh, like to move uh, to the next stage of uh, growth. Uh, for that, uh, we would like to make sure to complete these structural reform initiatives. Uh, that is the most important mission for us as well as the CEO. And there are two main pillars for this. Uh, one is uh, business portfolio changes and operational reform. With this, uh, we would like to significantly raise our profitability. And another uh, aspect is in the smart life uh, sector, we have yet to fully leverage uh, uh, Lumada, so we need to come up with a good business model leveraging Lumada. Uh, we need to establish that, which is something that we would like to uh, do. So through these initiatives, uh, uh, reaping uh, the results of uh, business structural reform, uh, we would like to grow fully by operating the digital service business as uh, described in 2024 MTMP. So we're in the preparation uh, phase uh, in that regard. Uh, and we're looking to complete business structural reform. Now, uh, this slide shows our financial targets of 2021 medium-term management plan. As you can see here, we will accomplish the business structural reform to achieve an operating income ratio ex exceeding 10% in fiscal year 2021. For the three years, Cumulative total investment amount during the current midterm management plan is planned at approximately 300 billion yen. And this is mainly on the capital expenditure for digitalization. So through these efforts, we will improve the operating income ratio and increase asset, but achieve around 15% ROIC. Next, let me explain our structural reform policy, starting with automotive systems, followed by smart life and eco-friendly systems, and healthcare. First, let me explain the structural reform in the automotive systems field. So here, the business portfolio change and operation reform to greatly improve the profitability. Last year, President Koch assumed the office at Hitachi Automotive Systems and started the reform. Core and non-core businesses have been selected and sorted. And for non-core, we have divested significant amount. And operational reform is also conducted in parallel. And in the fourth quarter last year, the operating income ratio reached 8%. And this is up 2% year on year. So the operational reform is also progressing and bearing fruit. On the other hand, there are challenges we need to overcome. Non-core businesses are mostly divested. So the next challenge is the enhancement of core product businesses that we decided to retain. This is our largest challenge. So how can we go about this? In 2021 midterm management plan, we will work to have strategic alliance, including the ones with our competitors and M&A. Our market share of the core products is around fourth to twelfth in the world. So we want to become one of the top three in all businesses we are engaged in. And the president is taking a lead to make that happen. And if that can happen, as you can see on the upper right, uh, 1.2 trillion yen on the low side and 1.7 trillion yen on the high side in revenue. So, and in addition, in operation, there's still much room for improvement. So we will improve the operation in parallel to achieve the target operating income ratio of 10%. Next is smart life and eco-friendly systems field. You may know the air conditioning business, we had some structural reform underway. Uh, we are focusing on bottom line and not stick to the full consolidation. But the home appliances will be the next target for the structural reform. We are entering that phase. So first of all, uh, the sales and 
manufacturing services uh, will be consolidated under the newly established Hitachi Global Life Solutions. The new president, Mr. Taniguchi, he is 46 years old, very young person. He will be leading this structural reform. Now, the conditions surrounding the structural reform. Uh, we integrated the air conditioning system business with Johnson Controls, which is progressing steadily, and the operating income ratio will be achieving what's mentioned here on the slide. However, there are still challenges. The operating income is still 5% or so, uh, which is still low profitability. Our home appliance business is still low profitability. So we need to improve this further. In the next medium-term plan period, in Japan, we will change the channel structure and also address the structure. As you can see, the supply chain, EC channel has much higher profitability. On the other hand, the refrigerators and washing machines, these large home appliances are not well attuned to the EC channel yet. And so supply chain, the entire supply chain will be reviewed for this large-scale structural reform in Japan. In overseas markets, we need more scale. So like we did with air conditioning, we will not stick to full consolidation and find partners flexibly, especially in China and ASEAN. We will aim to expand the scale and improve our business efficiency. Now, our profitability improvement target in this field, the adjusted operating income ratio of over 8% is our target. And EBIT, I mentioned that we focus on bottom line, so we want an EBIT ratio of over 10%. Next is structural reform in the healthcare field. Uh, this is where we want to gather all Hitachi capability. If we hold on to the uh, business that we cannot compete in the world, it's meaningless. So as you know, Hitachi Medical and Hitachi Aloka were already integrated into Hitachi Limited. The strategies are now developed and implemented in a much easier fashion. And one more focus is oncology. We integrated Mitsubishi Electric's particle therapy system business and are strengthening the business now. So the next challenge, if I could repeat myself, from my view, uh, there's still fragmented resource in Hitachi Group, so we need more integrated efforts in he healthcare to raise the presence. So we are trying to find out the best way to do that. And the other is the diagnostic imaging systems. Uh, the commoditization is progressing and there are consolidation in the industry. So we need to take countermeasures against this commoditization of diagnostic imaging systems. Now 2021 midterm management plan we are thinking of leveraging Hitachi Group's capability. One strength Hitachi has is Hitachi High Technologies Measurement and Analysis Technology. So we will use that as the common base on which healthcare business will be re-established. That is my basic thinking. And along with that, regarding the diagnostic imaging system, it is difficult for Hitachi to survive alone and therefore we will look for global partners and explore the best strategy, including the integration of the business. On the right side, you can see the operating income ratio and EBIT ratio. We want operating income ratio of 10 to 15 percent by fiscal year 2021, and that is what is expected from the industry. We are committed to this target. So far, I've been talking about the improvement of the profitability and the integration of the business. Uh, one more point we need to do in the 2021 medium-term management plan is the Lumada 
business model establishment. We have concrete projects and starting to see and understand the business models uh, which is established as the smart life infrastructure as a service. More specifically, hard and software and total system. This is a business model that provides the comprehensive system, including finance, financing, to reduce CapEx and OPEX. Analytics and AI are utilized to, in, to reduce the OPEX on the part of the customers. So that is the basic business model. In smart city, add air conditioning, elevators, escalators, and the safety-related monitoring systems are provided uh, to the developers as system, including financing, and improve the overall efficiency using Lumada. So that is the overall picture. Now, one more important point is multiple systems are in operation, uh, which generates data. So we will work with the customers and de deliver these data in the open fashion to third-party vendors as well, so that we can expand this digital economy. So smart therapy, medical, and connected, smart city. In these three areas, we will focus our efforts. During the 2021 midterm management plan period, uh, we will invest approximately 30 billion yen, mainly in APAC, and aim for the cumulative orders of over 100 billion yen. Now, when we try to do this, the, the uh, pr product-centric uh, was the conventional format, but uh, we have the contract and risk management. So the front side, or the digital front, as we call it, we need to establish the digital front. So uh, the region and IT, Shiotsuka-san will talk about this later, but uh, we want to have uh, the important to have the function to coordinate the regional headquarters and IT sector. And so Smart Digital Solution Business Development Division was newly established to that end. Mr. Osumi, uh, who is from Omika, he became number two to number one, and he has rich experience in system coordination overseas. So he was promoted to general manager to lead this division. Uh, we will start with 400 staffs, but in 2021, we want to increase the front division to around 1,000 employees. As at the same time, we want to expand the d data economy. So it is important to involve the startups centering on the local digital natives aggressively. So. Uh, this will be promoted with our new established Hitachi Ventures, a newly established co corporate venture organization. And lastly, the roadmap. This year and next year, uh, we will have business portfolio change. And by 2021, uh, the focus will be on integration. So that is our view for the next three years. The business portfolio change uh, uh, please understand that we cannot talk about the individual names and projects yet, but we will have another briefing opportunity as soon as they become available for announcement. So I ask you for your understanding. That is all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we would like to move on to questions and answers. So our staff will bring a, a microphone to you, so please state your name and affiliation before asking questions. Any questions at this moment, please. Question. I have two questions. Regarding the automotive systems uh, business, uh, the concept behind it is such uh, that uh, you are looking to grow, including M&A opportunities, uh, but the competition is very harsh and intense in this area. Your portfolio is not all that uh, strong either. So once again, uh, how far are you willing to go? 
uh, with your current revenue, uh, you're not a size that you can be within the top three uh, in the area. So uh, your resolve or commitment or strategy for the automotive uh, system business, that's my first uh, question. The second question, a smart life sector ROIC for 2021 uh, is to exceed uh, 15 percent, so an increase of uh, five percentage points. In automotive uh, systems, uh, you are looking to have M&A. So what are your assumptions for uh, the numerator and the denominator of ROIC for 2021? Answer, thank you for the questions. Uh, uh, let me discuss the automotive uh, systems business first. Uh, in this area, uh, in our case, I think uh, we need to have sharp focus and selection. For example, Denso Continental, there are uh, such players uh, who are larger than us. Uh, looking at their business structure, well, their size is uh, big and uh, their portfolio is quite sizable. And the ratio of R&D is very high for them as well. So roughly speaking, in the industry, uh, if the operating margin average is 8%, uh, they uh, spend 10% uh, uh, on R&D. Their R&D uh, ratio is 10%. So how can we achieve the same level? Uh, EV, AD, ADAS, uh, businesses uh, which are growing, these are growth areas. Uh, we need a much sharper focus of what we're going to do. AD, ADAS, if we are to engage in an all-out war, how much ever we may spend on R&D expenses, uh, we won't be able to catch up. So we need to have sharper focus. Now, having said so, another aspect that we need to look at is as follows. In this area, uh, the automotive uh, systems, R&D ratio is very high, uh, software, AI, uh, these require huge investments, and that is why R&D uh, ratio uh, is higher. Uh, in our case, so our situation is somewhat different. Uh, within Hitachi Group, uh, we have R&D uh, group uh, with a huge R&D portfolio, including uh, that for software and AI. So we need to bring that to bear. So compared to other uh, players uh, who specialize uh, in automotive systems and components, I think we're able to perform a more efficient R&D activities uh, because of uh, uh, the group. I used to be uh, the head of uh, the R&D uh, group, uh, as some of you may know. So one of the metrics we used then uh, is operating uh, income a ratio divided uh, by uh, sales R&D ratio. And so uh, R&D of 10% and generating uh, operating uh, uh, margin uh, of uh, 0.8 or so. Well, uh, in the manufacturing uh, uh, sector, uh, if you're efficient, it's about 2 to 3%. So. We need uh, to achieve 1 or 1.5 percent in the case of automotive uh, parts and components. So in such a fashion, we need to uh, have efficient R&D activities. Uh, uh, that is what we focus on. And through efficiencies in R&D, uh, we would uh, like to achieve a double-digit uh, number. Of course, the quality uh, of manufacturing uh, has to be there, and we have to be efficient as uh, well. And through digitization, we would like to uh, bring ourselves uh, to the top level under the leadership of the president. So that's what we're looking to do in this area. Now, another question which had to do with uh, ROIC, or OIC, in the smart life sector overall. And of course, uh, there are ups and downs uh, in different uh, businesses. Uh, but uh, from a very macro uh, point of view, operating margin is around 5%. And there is tax levied. And there is uh, equity law applied. Uh, that is the numerator. And on the denominator side, uh, equity uh, and uh, interest-bearing debts. Uh, currently, uh, if you do the calculation, it's about 10%. Uh, I said that the size of investment will be around 300 billion, and that will be uh, the denominator. So that will be increased. On the other hand, 
operating margin will be raised to 10%. So overall, ROIC of 15% to be achieved. Uh, that is the overall uh, picture. A uh, question just uh, for clarification. Automotive uh, m and uh, that is part of the denominator or not? It's not uh, part of the denominator. That is the answer. Uh, so creating a JV and uh, having m and we would like to combine both possibilities. Uh, with respect to m and potential, we have not included that as part of the denominator. Question. Thank you very much for your explanation. Slide number 11, lower left, Hitachi High Technologies measurement and analytics uh, system. This will be used as the common base. And on the upper right, you said Hitachi's healthcare related business, you will conduct integra integrative investment. So if I interpret this, Hitachi High Technologies. Uh, through integrative investment, Hitachi High Tech will be in, uh, taken in and aim for overall growth. Is that right? So Hitachi High Technologies, measurement and analytics technology and healthcare centering on that technology. If uh, becoming independent and doing the business on its own or having it integrated in Hitachi Group manage it under Hitachi Group uh, for higher profitability or larger business. Uh, so uh, of these two options, uh, which are you thinking and what is your strategic view? Thank you very much. Answer. Thank you. First of all, I want to say uh, Hitachi High Technology, uh, parent-child will be dissolved or uh, or this relationship will be changed. We do not have that plan. So we, Hitachi, need to think about what to do with this listed subsidiary. So let me first say that at the outset. So what I want to say is how the Hitachi's healthcare business can be have large presence in the world. So that is our sole focus. So Hitachi High Technologies Measurement and Analysis Technology. Let me elaborate on this. So our central laboratory, the first research theme was the electro, electro, electron microscopy. And so we have this long-standing measurement and analysis technology like the optical and the mass uh, analysis. So all these have been the theme that the research laboratory has been nurtured over the years. And sometimes we find the good application field, which becomes a large business. So Hitachi High Technologies or healthcare, uh, they have grown through these methods. And H H Hitachi's basic mechanism to generate new businesses, in other words, various electron and other technologies we exist. And when it fits the application field, it becomes very large. And the optical analysis and the in vitro di diagnostics and the immunology and the different genre, uh, semiconductor related, CD, beams, uh, those are also there. And the MRI and the ultrasound, all these. So after this, uh, and DNA sequencer, if we think of all this, the basic research lab and Hitachi groups, measurement and analytics technology will be used as a common base to generate new things one after another. We think this is the most effective business model. So that is how we plan to operate this field, not just in healthcare, but utilizing this measurement and analytics will be uh, important. I'm sorry for a lengthy response, but our basic thinking is machine generates various and massive data and using that we will add value so the base data generation this is measurement and analysis including sensor so we need to have the solid technology 
to analyze the machine data with Lumara and create value. So we need to build this hierarchy. That's what I want to do. So Hitachi High Technologies common base will be utilized effectively. That's my message. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Question. Thank you for the presentation. I have two questions. And this may overlap uh, with uh, uh, the earlier questions, but regarding the automotive uh, systems, according to your explanation, you're not necessarily after a size or scale. Uh, you would like to narrow down and focus on areas uh, where you have strength. Well, in terms of uh, your ADA's business, uh, you said that you're going to have a sharper focus. But then on the other hand, your target is to grow revenue. So under uh, the new midterm management uh, uh, plan, uh, you would like to create a digital uh, foothold, uh, Lumada, a digital service. Uh, what you're trying to achieve in the next uh, three years, uh, scaling out the automotive uh, business and digital services that you're looking uh, to expand uh, under the next uh, plan, how can the two be tied? Answer. So let me answer one by one. Automotive uh, uh, systems. I thought the question that was raised was quite appropriate. What we have on our minds uh, is uh, the portfolio. We would like to narrow down the jar that we're in and uh, and uh, for the area that we focus on, the jar we focus on, we would like to scale up. Uh, rather than having a lot of weak businesses, uh, we would like to have uh, select a few businesses where we have strength. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, what we like to achieve. And uh, uh, that is why we're saying that we would like to strengthen our business portfolio. On the other hand, uh, for the world where connected cars become prevalent, how are we going to establish connectivity? Uh, the area that we are focusing on and narrowing down on uh, is uh, uh, where systems abound, uh, lots of uh, software, a motor, brakes, a steering a wheel, uh, everything is connected and they're becoming components uh, for uh, ADAS. So, so many pieces of software and systems uh, technologies uh, are channeled into uh, that area. Digital front, uh, where did I explain that? On which uh, slide? Yes, this is the slide according to this. So, when that environment uh, uh, emerges, Everything in the car uh, is uh, turning into systems. Uh, that is what is uh, actually starting to happen. So a car is becoming a information center, data center. Uh, so many pieces of uh, software uh, would work. And uh, as a foothold, uh, what we're trying to do is OTA, uh, software control. So huge amounts of uh, software, uh, we would like to uh, have better control over them. Uh, and. Lots of data will be generated out of uh, the software, and uh, uh, we will use Lumada, just like the cloud, uh, to analyze the data generated. That will be the entry point. And uh, further, step by step, uh, uh, we will provide uh, uh, data uh, uh, externally as well. So that is the overall picture of what we're trying to achieve uh, in the connected uh, car world. So what we consider as components uh, business will turn into systems uh, business uh, quite quickly. Uh, and in the 2024 uh, plan, uh, it will be a systems uh, business purely. So given that uh, vision, uh, what are we going to do? I talked about startup uh, uh, businesses. Uh, we need to be open uh, to various ideas. So as I said, uh, we will narrow down uh, on areas. And for the areas we focus on, uh, we will expand scale and drive profitability, uh, make R&D efficient so that we can uh, hit 10%. And beyond that, uh, connected cars, uh, software management, software control, and uh, systems on top of that, what should be the systems? What kind of services are we going uh, to provide? So we need to think about uh, that so that uh, we can grow our business even further. Uh, that is the overall thinking. Thank you. Question number two, overlapping with what was just discussed. So smart life uh, sector total. 
the way in which Lumada is going to be promoted in the IT segment and energy industry. In those sectors, uh, there's strong affinity with uh, Lumada, which is easy to imagine. In the smart life uh, sector, do you really have to stretch yourself so much uh, to leverage uh, Lumada? I understand that you will be building a Lumada-based uh, business model, but uh, as a feel, uh, do you have this uh, sense of feel that uh, a Lumada uh, business will grow in your sector? Answer, yes, I have a good uh, a sense and feel that uh, Lumada-based business will grow in the future. And uh, from the viewpoint of uh, uh, Lumada's uh, connection to Hitachi's business, let me once again explain. Well, as you may know, I'm one of the architects uh, behind uh, Lumada's uh, birth. So, as Mr. Shotska will uh, discuss in the IT sector, Lumada is very strong in the IT sector. So, IoT, digital, AI, data-centered uh, uh, business, uh, uh, what's going to be the entry point? We thought uh, that uh, Lumada should be the answer. More specifically, in the conventional SI business, everything was customized. Uh, programs had to be formulated uh, for integration, or using package uh, software integration would be achieved, uh, or integration would be achieved around the cloud. Uh, that's been the conventional approaches. S going forward, uh, integration in view of uh, generating a valuable data. Uh, that's going to be the concept under which Lumada uh, was uh, inaugurated. GE, Predix, Motors, uh, they have a completely different concept. Uh, we entered uh, through IT uh, to push for Lumada. IT's business two trillion, and uh, we would like uh, to increase one trillion. So. Uh, Centering around data, uh, IT business has grown, as I have just explained. Uh, for Hitachi Group as a whole, as a whole, uh, which is about 10 trillion, we would like to continue to expand uh, uh, Lumada uh, to all of the businesses within the group. And uh, rather than centering uh, on IT and integration, we would like to look uh, elsewhere. Products are going to uh, generate a lot of data, machine data, and so we will have to shift our focus to that, according to my thinking. Connected cars, uh, for example, or healthcare smart therapy devices, or air conditioners, elevators in smart cities, uh, so much data is going to be generated. Uh, the railway systems, uh, trains as well. So machine data that's generated, uh, what uh, value can we create out of that is uh, where the whole society now is focusing on. So that is the next uh, phase, uh, according to my thinking. Otherwise, if it's going to be Lumada business only within the IT uh, sector, uh, then it's such a waste. Uh, and. Uh, uh, if we make uh, too much haste, however, uh, customers will not be ready and uh, we could lose uh, speed. So uh, we have to look at a certain timeline, a certain uh, speed, so that customers will be ready uh, to leverage uh, Lumada uh, in other sectors as well. Uh, smart therapy, for example, particle therapy treatment. Uh, from software to overall management of the system uh, to the operation of the device. Uh, overall optimization needs to be achieved. That is a clear need from the customer. And uh, what are the financials uh, for uh, the overall system? People are asking the same with smart cities and connected cars uh, centering around OTA. The same questions will be asked and the same needs will exist. So in that regard, uh, we need to establish a foothold uh, in this uh, uh, concept. Uh, uh, we're at the right timing for that. So that's what uh, we will do in the next uh, plan. And for 2024 plan, we don't have to stretch ourselves uh, too much uh, to utilize Lumada in the smart life sector. Even without doing so, I'm sure Lumada uh, will be prevalent. Question. I have one question on the automotive. Earlier, you said that you will narrow down to the area you have competitive strength and expand from OTA. I understand that very well. T 
Tier 1, uh, the large European Tier 1, and Denso, which Hitachi will be competing in in the future, they have various products, and that's why they can have the software and conduct software management. Now, to compete with that, if Hitachi narrows down the product, you may be disadvantaged, I feel. So how do you plan to compete with the European T Tier 1 and Denso? What is your strength, competitive edge? How do you plan to compete with them? Thank you. Answer. So, for example, OTA is a good example. In automotive, there are various components and products. We do not think this can be totally provided by one company. So, software under multi-vendor environment has to be managed effectively. So, data center and system management, it's the same story. So, this skill, Hitachi has strong skill there. JT1 and system management and control, we think we are professional there. So on the data center side or cloud side and the in, in automobile, in vehicle, this is what we want to deploy. So automotive components like Conti and Denso and Bosch, those pure play players, compared to them, uh, we have competitive strength in the system operation and management. So we want to leverage this strength uh, in deploying OTA. When we do that, automotive parts companies and us. We can have alliance and standardization. Uh, this effort will be very important. So we will focus on such activities. Any other questions? Thank you. Question. Uh, there are two things I would like to ask, both regard uh, automotive uh, systems business. Earlier, uh, you talked about uh, increasing efficiencies in R&D. In the past, uh, there is R&D budget allocated, and yet uh, you end up uh, not using uh, the amount fully, and engineering resources uh, were lacking in the background. So you said that you will increase efficiencies. Does that mean that R&D resources will be increased uh, so that you can spend all of it? Or uh, are you going to uh, control and curtail the absolute amount of R&D, narrowing down on the products in which you spend R&D? And my second question has to do uh, with the earlier question. Uh, regarding the thinking behind customer business portfolio, if you are to compete with tier one players, are they going to be the customers uh, for yourself or car manufacturers uh, or a Mars world? So uh, which are going to be the target uh, customers uh, so that you can drive scale and volume? Answer, to address your first step point, uh, R&D efficiency. Uh, oftentimes, the discussion is on conglomerate uh, discount. As far as R&D is concerned, I think the reverse is true. In my firm conviction, AI analytics uh, software, uh, we need uh, a lot of such human resources. And we have uh, abundance of uh, human resources in those areas. So uh, how to fully leverage uh, these resources is going to be uh, the thinking. Uh, narrowing down on areas uh, where we have strength and in such areas, so we will go after volume, I said. R&D ratio and R&D uh, revenue ratio, uh, uh, if uh, they're increased, the absolute amount can be derived, and uh, by so doing, R&D amount can be secured uh, sufficiently. With respect to human resources, talents, AI software talents, uh, we are strengthening them. and. Uh, it's easier to hire these uh, people uh, within the R&D group. We already have a critical mass of such people. And setting up a new uh, research unit is going to be costly. But uh, in our case, we already have the foundation or the basis. And uh, so all we have to do is to build on what we already have. And that is something uh, that uh, uh, we will uh, work to do. So. In which areas are we going to drive uh, volume? Uh, you asked about a customer business portfolio. 
So OEM manufacturers, car manufacturers, uh, uh, we will uh, look to establish close relationships with them. So far, that's been the case. Going forward, that will be the case. A mass connected car uh, and so forth. Uh, uh, we should uh, fully leverage the fact that uh, we have uh, tight and close relationships with uh, car OEM manufacturers. So. Uh, the basic approach uh, is uh, uh, to uh, utilize the close relationship we enjoy with the car manufacturers uh, uh, to do business in these areas. So with that, uh, we will close the explanation on smart life sector. Thank you very much.